Releasing in Australian cinemas on uh, December 2nd is a film called Sit, Stay, Love. What a title. And it's my great pleasure to be speaking to the producer of the film, Spencer McLaren. Spencer, good to talk to you again. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Pleasure. Now, it's interesting how the Steve Jaggy Company has... I think somewhat cornered the market on romantic comedies and on family films. I'm, I'm really interested in this and your involvement with, with Steve Jaggy. Sure. So um, first of all, I, I guess we've certainly uh, had a focus, as, as you rightly acknowledge there, on, on the, the youth content and, and teen content and also with the, the romantic films. You know, I think we've done five or something in the last 18 months now, which has been very prolific. Um, uh, and exciting to be doing. Uh, it, it's definitely something we felt that, um, I guess we felt there was an under an underserviced market there in both the, the female skewed youth area and also, you know, I guess the, the 35 plus female audience too. And there wasn't a, a lot of content going out there that was specifically to feed that market. So we identified that and have, have strongly sort of pushed into that space. And, uh, and, and Steve and I worked together um, I have done quite a lot for the last two years. We, we met uh, probably, I think it's about six years ago on a different film that he was an EP on um, and I was producing on there. And uh, I don't technically work for the Steve Jaggy company. I have my company, McLaren House, and we sort of bolt together um, and, uh, and create, have created uh, a range of films, including this one, Sit, Stay, Love, which is uh, um, very exciting. It's our first Christmas venture too. And, you know, I'm a huge Christmas fan and dogs who couldn't love dogs in Christmas, you know, <laughs> what a combination. I agree that, uh, I that that should go well. I, I actually saw somewhere that the original title of the film might've been dog days of Christmas. Yes. That was the, the title we started with um, there. I think it's two reasons. We, we never loved that title in the first place. Um, uh, and then there's another one that we'd seen somewhere, which is called like the 12 Dog Days or something like that, which was a very different film. And so we thought, we'll just avoid that. And, and really, I think, you know, this, this is a bit of a pun on Eat, Pray, Love yeah. as well with the Sit, Stay, Love sort of reference there. And as soon as we, we hit on that, it, it really resonated. And I thought it's, you know, again, tongue in cheek for the target audience. It's, it's yeah, it, it, was, it was right, we felt. Okay, yeah, no, it, it, it works well. So tell me, Spencer, about producing the film, the, the casting, uh, and uh, uh, I suppose working on Holly Hester's script, Tori Garrett directed it and so on. How did all of that come about? So it's, it's um, uh, we read Holly's script uh, in the first instance, obviously, that's where it all starts with the script as always. Uh, and and really uh, responded to it. And as I said, we we've been actively developing and also um, you know acquiring content you know in terms of scripts and things that that do feed this audience. And, and we were looking specifically for a Christmas title at the time. So this one yeah, came along, um, and we had a chat with our um, international partners Mar Vista, um, who were really keen as well on the script. So uh, from there, we, we then um, found Tori, who was uh, back in Australia at that point. She'd worked quite a lot uh, internationally. And I think with everybody, with, you know, the onset of, of COVID and the like, people were coming home left, right and centre. So we're very excited to have Tori um, uh, back from LA to, to, to work on this one with us. And, uh, and then, of course, from there, you move into the casting phase of things and, and also locations and whatnot. And we're very excited that this is a completely Australian cast and some of our other films we do bring in a, a leading lady. Um, but this one was one of our first with a complete all Australian uh, cast there. And, and Georgia Flood, who really, uh, you know, helms the film, did such a, a stellar job. She was... Um, one of the names put forward quite early and, uh, you know, was a was an excellent choice. She was such a trooper. Uh, and, and I do know, you know, we did contemplate shooting this um, down in at an earlier date down in Melbourne, um, up at, well, not in Melbourne, actually, but in Victoria in, in the snowfields to really get a full authentic um, experience. But time got away from us there with COVID and whatnot and all of those things, trying to have to reschedule it. And so then... Uh, we ended up shooting this uh, on the Gold Coast, which is the first time 
you know, we've we've dealt with the world of fake snow and uh, we were very lucky to then uh, get access to Movie World at the time and not so much the studios, but um, the theme park. They have a Main Street USA, which we use there, which happens to be completely fitted out with snow machines and Christmas paraphernalia for their Christmas um, things. So we were very lucky that uh, they were also operating under kind of COVID measures and so really couldn't do a lot with some of the parks. So we we got to go in there and use that and they they were an amazing partner. And, and I have to say, um, one thing I've learned is that I never want to go to real snow because it'll be painful. Whereas the fake snow that we use and the company we use on this were just absolutely amazing it's it's and that they would just spray this stuff everywhere and it just looks so great we, we're just thrilled with the way it's come up it, it did look impressive and and I I, I thought I recognized that it, you might have shot in movie world um because that sort of looked somewhat familiar I was there a number of years ago and and this idea of the goal you shot in the Gold Coast but it's set in Vermont uh, which I, I find interesting that uh, it's uh, sort of an American, uh, obviously you're looking for an international market and uh, American market. So everyone speaks with an American accent. I, I find that all very interesting. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, you know, we, we obviously um, shot up at, you know, not far from Gold Coast, Tambourine Mountain as well, which is where you get that, you know, outdoor lush cabin sort of feel coming from in places as well. And um, yeah, it, it's not not all of our, uh, actually very few of them are all American accents. I think this is one of the, the first. Uh, we, uh, we did a half-half mix previously and often, you know, a leading lady might be American, et cetera. But it was an experiment for us to see if we could achieve that on our budget levels, you know, obviously, um, you know, Warner Brothers and Marvel and everybody shoots here for America with, you know, millions and millions and millions of dollars. Uh, we didn't have that luxury. Um, we're a smaller scale, but, you know, we, we've managed to recreate that here. And, and as you rightly point out, you know, there is a huge market for this style of, you know, Christmas romance um, in, uh, in the US. And uh, I don't know whether it's because, We've made one now, but I'm I'm more conscious that this year there seem to be a significantly larger amount of them that are targeting our audiences here as well. We're one of them, but I did notice this Christmas on the farm as well with um Hugh Sheridan uh, and Poppy Montgomery. I think is in there as well, and uh, yeah, there seem to be a lot more popping up on all the streamers that are being targeted at us all. So whilst we were keen to try and make a sale to the US with this one, um, we felt that, you know, Australian audiences will respond to it too. I'm sure they will. Tell me about working with dogs, because I can imagine <laughs> that, <laughs> what is it, WC Fields said, never work with uh, animals or children, or in that, not necessarily in that order. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, absolutely. That must be. Look, we, we were, um, <laughs> we were very lucky, these, these, three beautiful dogs we, we didn't have doubles you know like uh, like um uh, is often the case we had these three amazing dogs who all actually lived together and when we were on the search for these um beautiful puppies that was one thing that we wanted is to rather than have a trainer have to go and spend you know three four five months getting them used to one another etc we really wanted them to see if we could find a, a group and uh, we were very lucky that we did, and they have such personalities. And I have to say, they were uh, the least of the dramas on, on any of, of the set, you know. Yes, it takes a bit more time, but we were very lucky, and they always wanted to play. And, you know, the, I mean, that's down to the, the amazing work of the trainer and the training team that, that handle them. Obviously, it's not just a, a Christmas miracle um, that it happened. But uh, yeah, they, they were so wonderful and a lot of fun to, to and they, they just change the energy on set. You know, I think it is like kids as well. They come on and, you know, people who might be stressed, this, that, the other, and everyone's just like, oh, the dogs are here and they get a pat and whatnot. And everyone just kind of chills out and gets on with it. So it was a really, really lovely experience. Oh, that's great to hear. Now you did say you did have some dramas on the set. You, you have me intrigued <laughs> now. You've got to tell me. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, look, it's nothing more than the usual, to be completely honest with you. You know, schedule changes, losses of locations or things that, that happen, weather, uh, you know, and time. There's never enough time. There's never enough money, you know. I think they're the, the, the two classic things. No matter how much you've got, everybody always wants more. So um, there, there was no <laughs> big drama with a capital D, I, I'm afraid. We were very lucky. Uh, there as well that you know particularly our, our two leads Georgia and and uh, Ezekiel did such a, a stunning job and approached it so professionally you know because it's it's a it was a quick shoot you know into in terms of these things we were I want to say it was 20 days if I recall correctly so it's it's you know get in get out as it were um, and uh, away you go. Yes, they actually work very well together, and uh, um, I'm also intrigued in the rest of the cast. I mean, it's good to see Christine Amour, for example, uh, in the film, and so on. So you you've really cast some good actors who uh, who work yeah, with, uh, work well. Yeah, that, that's definitely a, a credit to um, uh, Tori as well with her um, aesthetic and what she was looking for. I mean, like I say, Christine and, and Tony Phelan are uh, absolute. Uh, legends within the industry and they they both just bring uh, a statesmanship to to the set as well that you just go this is great and you know Anna McGahn and um, Kaushik Das as well you know a, a lot of fun and and everybody really just kind of dug in and and got on with it and 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 did the job which is you know to, to be frank they're they're professionals that's that's what they're there for and it was it was great because that's not always the case <laughs> Yeah, of course, I understand. <laughs> so well done on that. So tell me about the rollout of the film. It's it's releasing in Australian cinemas on December 2nd, and I gather yes. in the US uh, around the same time, perhaps? Uh, I'm not, to be honest with you, I'm not completely sure of the US release details at the moment. Uh, it's not coordinated with the US, but I would have to say that it will be hitting their screens fairly quickly, given the content, you know. <laughs> You're not going to release a Christmas film in February. Um, so uh, uh, I will have to defer to Nicole um, in terms of the US details, but certainly here, uh, yes, we, we kick off on December 2nd uh, through uh, our partners at Event and Village Cinemas right across Australia. So a uh, you know, great partnership there with them to really get behind these female focused features. And we're really excited to see how it goes. Okay. Spencer, you've produced a, a number of films, uh, I've noticed, um, uh, and I think we may have spoken around the time of Surviving Georgia, which I remember yes, going back my a few first years. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. um, how do you decide what films you're going to be involved with? Well, after Surviving Georgia, I said never again, you know, <laughs> but I think we had 19 along now, so clearly that didn't last. It's just a, a recovery. Uh, there are there are a number of reasons that that, that I get involved in a film, and it, it can be a, a, any combination of I, I guess the the different levers that that, that I might want to pull. But at the core, the one thing that's always important to me is that I really want uh, the film to make the audience feel something. You know, now that doesn't always mean it has to be an intense, gripping art house story that that is harrowing uh it can be something like sit stay love which is warm-hearted light entertaining i honestly do believe that that is just as valid and probably more so in the current climate you know we all need a bit of a lift after the couple of years we've been having um and that's really what what has to be on the agenda first and foremost, then how it does that, you know, is then a different question. And if I've done seven Christmas movies, then I probably won't do another one. You know, I like to try and mix it up. I've done, I think I've done, this is the first Christmas movie here. I've done, I think it's, I'm gonna say four other romances, uh, a couple of the teen ones, um, and I'm just working on uh, a literary thriller actually at the moment with Guy Pierce. Um, called The Infernal Machine, um, which Paramount are picking up. So that's a very different um, kind of avenue for me now. But again, I, I just read that script and just thought it's gripping. And, you know, it does have a bit of a moral compass in there that, you know, has a bit of a lesson for, for people. Not that I want to be too didactic telling people how to live their lives, but 
it's uh, it was a really exciting script. So I, I couldn't turn that one away, even though it's it's it would stand out from the list of other films I've made. Yes, yes, and and as you say, the uh, the sort of the family romantic sort of um, uh, area is is a, a good niche one. Um, to uh, yeah. satisfy audiences. And I know you're involved with Swimming for Gold and I, I remember speaking to the director yes. on that one and Dive yep. Club uh, and, and uh, a number of other productions. So in terms of being a producer in the Australian environment and trying to uh, get financing and as well as getting the right um, sort of uh, people together to make the film, uh, that must be quite a challenge in itself. Well, look, I guess, I, yes, but I, I I think that's the job. You know what I mean? <laughs> you, you know, if if you can't get the dollars, then you can't make it, unfortunately. And and it is, uh, you know, a, a skill and an art form in a, in a, and of itself. And uh, you know, we we've been very fortunate, and uh, I think because of some of the early successes with, uh, you know, things like um, Riptide, one of the earlier ones I worked on with Steve. Um, together and then continuing to back that up with Swimming for Gold. You know, it's opened a lot of doors for us internationally with partners who will, you know, pre-buy and assist us in, in, in putting the finance package together there. And of course, you know, we've been very fortunate to have some great support from Screen Queensland uh, in the space as well. Uh, it's, it's very difficult to, to be making, uh, you know, content in this country without government partners. And they have been an exceptional one across the board for us you know particularly with dive club and um you know and helping us with you know things like the warner brothers introductions etc and those kind of things on sit stay love here okay and spencer of course you've acted in a number of roles as well are you uh, looking for more acting roles as well <laughs> look i i uh i guess the, the the rule of thumb for me there is I, i've stopped actively pursuing it meaning that you know i don't um uh, I don't keep myself available uh, because, you know, you can't not commit to these films when you're producing them. It's a full-time gig. But, you know, if Spielberg calls or if anybody calls in that fact, actually, I, I love it. I do enjoy it a lot and I'm very keen to continue to do more of that. But it, it is it is quite a commitment, you know, to, to be a full-time working actor in this country. It, it does require a lot of you. And, you know, I'm very appreciative of that, even more so now, I guess, because, you know, I've sort of stepped behind the camera there um, and, and it became apparent very quickly that it, it's, it's hard to keep myself completely available for that other stuff. So I do turn down a bunch of things simply because I can't and, you know, I'm, we've committed to shooting a film or whatever that is, but I'm definitely keen to, to do some more. So, you know, if anyone's out there, I'm available. <laughs> <laughs> And I was going to ask you too, would you like to also move into a directing role? Look, I have toyed with that idea. I do have a script I've been developing that uh, I have considered might be um, one, but ironically, it's, oh, I don't know if it's ironic, but it's annoyingly, uh, it, it's very hard to get someone to back a first time director. Um, we've, we have worked quite hard with our films um, to particularly support female directors. And we have broken three of them into the feature world in terms of Christine Luby uh, and um, Hayley McFarlane and Rosie Lord. Uh, but having those conversations to get the sales agents and international partners on board can take some time. And that's no exception for me. If I wanted to suddenly you know, say, right, I wanna direct this one, you know, and I have had some conversations that I would like to do it at some stage. You know, I, I probably like like anybody wanting to direct will have to go out and, and do a short proof of concept, get them comfortable with my visual style, all those kind of things. Uh, you'd think it'd be easier for me to insist as a producer going, well, I'm going to direct it too. But uh, it sadly is not <laughs> the case. So uh, at some point I'd like to, but at, at the minute it's um, it's a slow burn, that one. Okay, fair enough. Look, congratulations on uh, producing Sit, Stay, Love in cinemas December 2nd. And uh, Spencer McLaren, thank you so much for talking with me. Thank you for having me. All the best. Bye-bye. Cheers.